This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Round number six of the Porsche Pro Qualifying Series is just minutes away as drivers are looking to punch their ticket to the chance of winning a share of $100,000 in the Porsche iRacing World Championship. We head ourselves today to the mountain, to Mount Panorama, and after the chaotic scenes at the start of the last race at Imola, one will hope that they can all survive this very demanding racetrack, where qualifying position will mean quite a lot. Hello again everyone and welcome to Mount Panorama, welcome to Bathurst and welcome to Australia. Welcome to the Porsche Pro Qualifying Series here on Racebot TV, streaming live as ever on the iRacing Esports Network. It's Will Vincent along with Jack Styles. No Connery today unfortunately, uh, he'll be back with us for round number 7. Track temperature today is 25 degrees Celsius. We've got ourselves um, an ambient wind speed of 29, 30 kilometers an hour. That's about as windy as it can get. And humidity of 33%. Want to talk about those wind speeds first of all, Jack, because that is going to make certain parts of this racetrack really, really difficult. Of course, the big one is that run into the chase. And that run into the chase is really where you have to get it right. These cars are very difficult to stop in some circumstances. And Bathurst is a track that you cannot take your eye off the ball. You make a mistake at any point of the track and it will bite faster than you think it will. Obviously, the wind is going to affect that. If it's a headwind, it's going to actually help you into the chase. If it's a tailwind, you might want to bring your braking point back just slightly just to make sure you can get stopped for that left-hander. Yeah, indeed. So, also, it would be very interesting down into Griffin's turn number two. Really, the last corner before you end up slithering up and down the mountain itself. As ever, shout out to Istvan Balau, track cams, 22.com, Andres Warner, and One Design, Simon Grossman, appgenering.com, and Nick Thissom for a race spot TV live timing and scoring, which will be available once this race gets underway. So qualifying is currently being contested. The thing about this one as well, Jack, is because it's such a long outlap, it means that these drivers don't have the safety net of just being able to go back to pit road. No, and I am seeing a couple of cars with a little bit of damage after their first lap, so it means that they're they're finding the limits of the circuit so far today. Obviously, a very warm track temperature, 46 degrees Celsius, so there is going to be a, just a little bit of struggling with these drivers. The grip what quite isn't there that they may have had in practice. As we're looking at the times currently coming through after those first laps, Camel Franjak currently sitting top of the pile with a 205. And as I say that, Ricardo Castroledo goes to the top with a 2064. And the times are getting quicker and quicker, Will. So everyone's just finding their groove in the circuit and they're now pushing for that second lap. We're on board and Max Benecke, Jared Phil Sell goes to the top of the timing stands, 206.286. Max Benecke, a third of a second back right now. We're going to go on board 
for this lap with Max Beneke as he heads himself through Quarry Corner right now. The second of the right-handers before you come towards Reed Park at turn number seven. Beneke, he hasn't actually run a race this week, so he is looking to try and get himself maximum point in this strength of field event. We're not likely to see some of the drivers we normally see because of the 12 hours of Bathurst going on simultaneously. Frederick Rasmussen has already won this run this week, as has Jeremy Bootaloop. Down through the dipper comes Max Beneke. And now towards Forest Elbow. Second sector, 30.350 then for Max Beneke. And this is now going to be like a long run down to the chase. It's going to be interesting with these high winds about how these drivers end up in the draft. Whether or not they end up towards the back end of the rev limit. That might make overtaking a little bit more complicated depending on how that wind is. Into the chase then will come Max Beneke. Slows it down for corner number 21. The left-hander uphill. Then the right-hander. It just falls away a little bit on corner exit. One more corner to go. That is going to be Murray's corner. Turn number 23. The left-hander. The start-finish line comes up very quick after this one. And it's going to be 206.4 then for Max Beneke. Not clued enough for pole position. Only P number 5 as we now go on board, Jack with um, Jared Philsell. Jared Philsell is the driver currently at the top of the timing standing. He's heading himself through the chase, really attacking that curb on the left-hand side, which you'd have to. Heads him down, heads himself down underneath the Dunlop Bridge into this final corner. This final corner, Murray's corner, is a very difficult corner because there's a lot of curb. You cannot get on the power early because there's the wall is very close. Across the line, he'll go. He will improve to a 206 flat. That puts him three tenths clear at the top of your timings will and he is very very comfortable in the pole position yeah now enzo benito let's turn our attention to him p number 15 in the bright purple team red line car exit final corner 206.5 that brings benito up into the seventh position right now sebastian dunkel patrick holtzman they have not yet set times there's only 30 odd seconds to go and it looks as though that dunkel will just get past the start finish line in time this will be one lap only then for Sebastian Dunkel in the number 11 machine as he now heads himself towards that final corner. 204, 205, 206. 206.9 for Sebastian Dunkel. That will put him no higher than 17th. And qualifying is almost over here. So what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is take you through your starting grid for this edition of the Porsche Pro Series. Well, here's your starting grid then. Jared Philsell, Trans Tasman Racing, pole position 206.014. Exactly 341 one thousandths of a second faster than Darren Nowakowski in Triton Racing. Kemal Franczak, third place also for Triton Racing. Patrick Holtzman in the fourth position. Fifth place will be Ricardo Castroledos, BRS Corona Sim Sports Car, and then Jack Sedgwick and NX Racing in P number six. Max Beneke all the way back on row number four, sharing that one with Enzo Benito. Row number five is going to be Tumas Tatler in from Finland and Alejandro Sanchez from MSI Esports. Kim Erickson in 11th place, David Williams in 12th. Rest of your 25 car field coming up on your screen. Well, Jack Imola was crazy at the start. We're hoping not to see the same because otherwise there might be a track blockage. Yeah, you get a cut it you get a blockage up through the cutting and up through Reed Park and especially McPhillamy Park. You are not gonna find a way past any of these cars. You really do have to be careful here at Bathurst to make sure everything is where you need it to be. Get single filed, going down the mountain straight up into Quarry Bend, turn number two. That is the most important part for this first lap. Once that happens, everything else is sorted. Correct. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, you can subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network right now. Just click on the subscribe button if you're watching us on the network right now and get the very best racing action from our friends over at the Global Sim Racing Channel, SimSpeed TV, Podium Esports, LSR TV, and so many more. The iRacing Esports Network, your home of the best 
in sim racing so we are almost ready to go then here ladies and gentlemen for round number six of the Porsche Pro Series 20 drivers looking to punch their tickets those lights going on those lights going off on top of the iRacing.com gantry we are ready we are going away then as the drivers will all storm themselves down towards that first corner for the first time at the front of your field we've got ourselves no incidents but we got almost through wide racing at the top of your field as they head themselves down towards turn number two griffin's bend for the first time this is when things get very interesting look at how close that one is between franjack norakoski and holtzman holtzman the driver trying to force himself through the middle of these two triton racing cars could not do so and behind you've got max maneke and jack sedgwick they've been looking close together as well and maneke is up one place he's got himself past carter catalino and there's a big incident that we talked about could what have happened and we've got one driver on its route and it's a Kawada Sim Sports driver and that one as well it's not stopped the field but it's really broken up the field Jack yeah, that's a Ricardo Castroledo. Not the first time in this series that he's ended up on his roof. He's had to take the toe back to pit lane, and that was not where you wanted it through the cutting. The blind left-hander, Oli Parkler, involved in that one. So was Sebastian Dunkel. Everyone else seems to have got through pretty much unscathed. Patrick Holtzman got an amazing start. He was the one who almost sent it three wide going down after the first corner. Wasn't able to get it done, but Jared Philsell up at the front of this field. He heads himself into the dipper for the very first time had a good advantage over Dave Novoski as they head down the Conrod straight. Yeah, this is Ricardo Castroledo in that VRS Corona Sim Sports car. The replay up on your screen now. This is into turn number three and four, the cutting. And you just see he gets turned around by Enzo Benito. Benito out of the race as a consequence as well. We get one more look if we can very quickly. This is going to be on board with Enzo Benito as he heads himself into the cutting. And you just see the two drivers coming together right about there. Enzo Benito as a consequence also out of this event. But let's go back to live footage as lap number one of this event is going to be scored complete. And it's Jared Phil Sell leading from Camel Frontac, from Darren Nowakowski, Patrick Holtman, Jack Sedwick and Max Paneke. They are in a six car train right now and there's a one second gap back to Thomas Tatler who's had himself a great start to this event and that is all because of the incident between Enzo Benito and Ricardo Castroledo lap number one corner number four behind we've got some close battles going on but this is a stage of the race where everyone's just trying to try and get themselves into a form of rhythm as we go on board right now with Darren Nowakowski in that Triton racing car live timing and scoring is available right now just visit race Facebook.tv forward slash timing, but what a crazy first lap we had, Jack. Yeah, and I expect nothing more from Mount Panorama. It's always a circuit that gives us amazing action, and we've got plenty more of it coming your way over the next 25 minutes. I did see towards the end of the first lap that Camel Franchak was looking to try and get past Gareth Phil Sell, but Phil Sell into the chase was able to hold it off so the draft is very strong here today will the winds obviously not affecting these drivers too much however we will have to wait and see the leading pack currently making their way through but filling park down towards skyline and the s's this is one of the most complicated and difficult sections of the circuit because there's corners they're off camber and in one of them is the heading through now actually the front wheels come off the ground so you do lose steering of the car and that really does make it very complicated and it's why this circuit is so technical we got an accident at the top of the hill and that's involving the 25 and the 24. yeah that's Ian Gouven and more and um, potentially involved in that let's just cycle this one back and show you very quickly and it always yeah Ian Gouven number six machine involved in it number 24 car many drivers involved then we'll get you up to date on that one in a minute Sebastian Dunkel involved Glenn K Jake Hewlett I want to take you to the top of the field just in case there's anything going on with Camel Franzak at town and no that wasn't so what we might be able to do now is go back and have a bit more of a closer look at what happened um, the 24 car let's go on board with Glenn Kay because he's one of the drivers involved in this one and you can see it's all going to start bunching up as they come down the hill and this is what we mean about tracks getting blocked quickly I believe you had yeah you did have Oli Pakula involved in that one as well so Oli Pakula let's go back and see what happened with him because I think he just gets this car that team red line number 15 car turned around and the answer to that one is in towards oh my word he had just nowhere to go the driver was blocking the track there jack 
Yeah, it looks as though Ollie Parkler, he came in just a little bit unsighted. Or it looks as though the 25 machine in Vegor was trying to get across the track. Ollie Parkler was going for the gap that a second ago he saw was open. And nope, there was not enough room for him to get through and into the side of the car he goes. So another one of your leaders lost out of this race. We've just been having a look on board there, Jack, and um, we've just been having a look on board, and Jack Sedgwick very, very close there to the rear of Patrick Holtzman, um, having a look on board and showing you some of the feels around this Bathurst racetrack, but Jack Sedgwick got himself close to the rear of Patrick Holtzman down the back then, but it's also worth noting that uh, Trumas Tatler, he's closing in to this lead gap again. The gap's about one second. He's not allowing your top six to get away. No, and I think that's very important because it means that for Tatler, he can stay there and stay there forever. Anything goes wrong with these forward six guys. The lap times right in the field are very, very close in the top 11, 12 cars. The fastest lap in the race so far is Bobby Zelensky, and he's down in 10th position. As it looks as though Jack Sedgwick is now coming under pressure from Maximilian Bonacca as they head themselves up into the cutting. Bonacca is looking through turn number two. However, Sedgwick just managed to position his car right in the middle of the track where he couldn't be, wasn't able to get past. And as they head themselves up through Griffins Mountain Reed Park, all looking pretty same. Everyone wants to go single file through this section wall because if not, disaster can happen very, very quickly. Bobby Zelensky pushed down two positions as him and Kim Erickson came very close together as they worked themselves through turn number two. But we'll go on board this time with Max Benecke in just one moment as they worked themselves down the mountain through skyline you can see there's that very short ribbon that goes in amongst the trees on this mountain at Bathurst now on board with Max Meneke trying to get a better exit that's why he pushed right oh he hits the wall on the exit on turn number 17 Forest Elbow and that's going to drop him back a little bit Max Meneke was initially looking to just try and find a better way out of turn number 17 versus Jack Sedgwick, but Beneke just getting some damage now to that right front. And that's going to be very important for the remainder of this race because the more damage that these cars start to rack up and these drivers start to suffer with, it's going to slow the lap times down and it will mean that they cannot get the same performance out of the car. It's going to really hurt them down the Conrad straight with these high winds today and that's going to be very important. You look at the cars ahead of, of Max Benecke at the moment, everyone seems to have a pretty clear car. Jack Sager has got just a little bit of wing damage on the right hand side by the looks of it and that is why people survive here at Bathurst. Even over a half hour race, it is still a battle of survival and who can last the, the length of the race along with Paul, the best pace out of their car. Yeah, on board with Jack Sedgwick in the number 16 car in X Racing Machine as he works himself down towards turn number two on track again. Griffin's Bend, the right hander that's uphill. You exit this corner and then this is really no overtaking here unless the driver ahead of you makes a serious mistake behind. Close battle still going on with Kim Oaks and Moritz Luna and Bobby Zelensky. Zelensky, of course, lost two positions, one lap ago exactly to both Kim Oaksen and Moritz Lona. He's looking to try and gain himself back out. Retirees today, Jack Hewlett, Oli Pakula, they were involved in the incident with Igor Di Ogunoginov. 
Um, I'm going to get that right. Number 25 machine, Igor, as well as Ricardo Castroledo and Enzo Benito out on lap number one of this event. What you got out front is Jared Philsell leading the way by 1.1 seconds in that Trans Tasman Racing VRS car. Heading himself now through the Falcon Corner, um, Forrest Elbow. Kamal Franzak in second place. He's got his teammate right behind him. That means that they can work together a little bit to try and stop the onslaught of Patrick Holtzman et al. But um, Sedgwick is now close to the rear of Patrick Holtzman as that speed picks up to over 270 kilometers an hour. Let's see, is he clipping the limiter? No, he's not. He slows it down for the chase. I think there's a bit of a crosswind going on. There's a lot of these drivers being very gingerly for the chase right now, Jack. It's a northerly wind we've got here today, so it's not surprised me. And it is a crosswind. You've got a tailwind down the main straight and a headwind as they head themselves over the top of the mountain. But as they're going up the mountain, they are slightly shielded by the walls, but they still do have a crosswind, and that is very important. So all the way down that Conrad Strait and all the way through the chase, a very, very strong crosswind here today. On board of MSI Esports, Alejandro Sanchez, number nine car running in the eighth position. He's got himself Thomas Tatler just ahead of him. Alejandro Sanchez on mountain straight away, looking to try and find a way past the number 23 car, who we haven't seen often here in this series, or not on the broadcast of races at least. And one of the things is, Jack, because of the fact, I say that, Alejandro Sanchez makes contact and turns around. Tatala, the two, almost blocking the track again. And be careful, boys. Well, they both get going again, but another incident down at turn number two. Replay coming up for you. And we'll have to have a look at this from our aerial coverage. And wow, what actually happened was, was that Beneke? Someone going very slowly um, down at the turn number two, Griffin Spender. I didn't see that until we literally got to the scene of the incident. Alejandro Sanchez, he wasn't anywhere near close enough. But as we go again here, we'll just slow this one down or we zoom it in for you. All of a sudden, what you end up with is one driver just literally tagging that wall. And was that, it was Max Beneke who caused that incident just by pushing wide at turn number two, Jack. Yeah, and that's very important. And obviously, the resulting incident that happened meant that the, some of the cars behind were backed up. Marin Cholak really had to slow down to avoid the accident ahead of him. Alexander Thieb came in like a wrecking ball as they head themselves into the cutting. And next thing you know, Marin Cholak's on his roof. And he is now also out of this event. So ba Bathurst is really biting hard for these drivers today. And this could be the make or break race for some of these drivers on the cusp of that top 20 position which will get them an automatic entry into the Porsche World Championship. Yeah, so that's two incidents now for Max Beneke running in that sixth position. He is three seconds back from your leading group now, or Jack Sedgwick, um, Patrick Holtzman et al. But for Max Beneke, as he crosses the start-finish line, let's have a look at his last lap time, show you how much he lost with that incident. Three seconds he lost there. He's got damage now to both the left front and the right front on that car. And there's a lot of drivers behind. Moritz Lohner, Kim Eriksson, Bobby Zelensky. They are not going to care about the fact that Beneke is looking to win a championship here. They're just going to pass him. Yeah, and that's really important. And for Max Beneke, his lap times last time around, obviously, it was slower because of the incident through turn number two. To mean that he's obviously, of course, locked this lead back. He's sort of left a bit on his own now. He's got to fend for himself. I know that Max Beneke is very capable. He, there's a reason why he got to 10,000 iRacing before anyone else on, on, on iRacing. But I think today he might be struggling with Bathurst. Bathurst is one of those circuits where you can be the best driver in the world and it will still snap and it will still go. It's why we see the Australians really do show here. Of course, in the VRS GT World Championship last year, TTL Esports took their one win of the year here with Josh Rogers and Richard Hampstead and Jared Philsell, another one of the Aussie uh, New Zealand contingency leading here today. And I think that is a bit of a trend, Will, but if you come to Bathurst, expect the Australians and the New Zealands to really shine here. Yeah, this is essentially the Australian version of Daytona or Indianapolis for the Americans, like Interlagos for the Brazilians. Um, it is a track that really, I mean, it's so demanding. And it will take thousands of laps to get to the ultimate speed and knowing every part 
of the track and all the corners. Alejandro Sanchez, by the way, he's just had another moment. I think he is now out of the event. Let's have a look. He has an incident yet yeah, down the mountain. The MSI eSports driver will come. And has he just lost connect? No, he just pulled it off at the side of the racetrack. Yeah, so Alejandro Sanchez out of this motor race right now. As we go back to have a look at Patrick Holtzman in the number two machine. Holtzman completing what is going to be these drivers. Eight flap, now seven flap on track even. We're almost halfway. In fact, we are halfway through this race now. Holtzman just doing a very steady race in fourth place. Yeah, and that's all that he needs to do. He's going to get a good points haul today, here today. He might not be that podium, and the podium is what these drivers will always want to aim for, but fourth position, still a good haul of points, especially with the SOF. It hasn't been as high as we used to, Will, but obviously that's because of Bathurst going on. It's just 6,875 today, so the points won't actually be as high for the winner as they have been, but it's still going to be vital as Patrick Holtzman really going wide through turn number two, very close to making contact with the wall. Athers, that's every single corner. Just been having a look then at Kim Erickson um, there and just having a look, I'm going to say Jack, we've just been having a look on board of Erickson and down the mountain once again. Kim Erickson doing a fantastic job and a lot of these drivers are gaining positions when they otherwise wouldn't be doing so because of the high attrition rate. Yeah, and I think we just had another two drivers have an incident at some point on the circuit, Mika Harpenen and Dennis Boski. Both having to take a toe back to the pit lane. I believe on my track map, I saw that happen over the top of the mountain. So the mountain is really where these drivers seem to be struggling today. But this battle going on where Kim Erickson is. Then ahead of him is Moritz Lohner. These, they've all caught up to Maximilian Beneke. Beneke can't really do much. Lohner's going to look down to the inside. They head themselves into Hell Corner. But the number 10 driver just going to sit back, Will, wait until the end of this straight and try and gain as much time as possible in the draft. Yeah, that was the teammate of Kim Erickson. Mika Happenen, who had the incident as it worked themselves up the hill and Moritz Lona we're having a look then down to the inside of Max Beneke outside even of Max Beneke Beneke is going to be passed by one two three the entire gaggle of cars Max Beneke's car is seemingly hurt right now because he's unable to defend against anyone and maybe he was just thinking okay I need to bring this home. I know the attrition rate is high, and maybe if I just allow these people to go racing, one or two of them will crash. Thing is, is he doesn't want to knock himself down too many places. He's down to 10th position now, and that's going to be really important when it comes to the point standings. We know that Freddie Rasmussen was at the top of the standings this time last week by the end of this race. He had an absolutely brilliant race at Imola and was able to take away a good points haul, I believe, last week. And for Max Beneke, it just seems to be getting the, the start of the season triumphs that we saw with wins every single week on the trot. They just don't seem to be there anymore, and it is slightly worrying. And I wonder whether we're going to get a second coming for Max, and he's going to really push for the second half of the season. Yeah, as we're looking at Darren Olkowski right now, we did see that Max Paneke did clearly break to allow all those drivers to go past. So he was recognising the fact that his car is damaged and he did not want to get into any of the drivers' ways. We're on board with Jack Cedric. We haven't really talked about um, Jared Phil Sell right now, but he has been able to keep this lead going. 1.5 seconds over Camel Franchak. Um, Jared Phil Sell, he got himself pole position at the start of this race. He has been losing a bit of time lap on lap over the last three as they cross the start finish line again. Jared Phil Sell, 206.826, loses another attempt to Camel Franzak, but actually gains a tenth. Let me get the one back. Gains a tenth over Camel Franzak. Um, he's just pulling out that gap lap, lap after lap right now, Jack. 
And it's that 10th here, 10th there, that is really going to help his race come the end of it. Know that he's been strong. He put that car on pole for a reason. And pole position is the best place you can be at Bathurst. Because not only do you have the inside line into turn number one, not only do you have the advantage of not, as long as, long as you don't crash yourself, you won't get caught up in the first lap dramas that we saw. The one disadvantage is, is that you could be the bottleneck for every single other car in this field if it all goes wrong. But for Jared Philsell, it has been an absolutely brilliant drive. And that's about all there is to say about Jared Philsell's drive today is that he has been on the mark, on the ball. He hasn't been the quickest overall, but consistency, it has really been there. Yeah, indeed. So as we're just looking through your field as the little retirees grows even bigger. Back to Kim Erickson. He's close up to the rear of Moritz Lohner right now. And this is now for sixth place. Oh, my word. Another tag of the wall. As Maneke, so it downs into 10th place. Kim Erickson up into 7th place right now. Moritz Lona in the 6th position. I think Kim Erickson's getting a little bit frustrated in that Black Star racing car right now. Because he can't seem to find a way past. And he had what was a kind of a big lunge down at turn number 2. Um, over the driver Bobby Zelensky earlier in this race. But Kim Erickson, I don't know what it is. He just can't seem to be able to get the moves complete here today. And we know that Moritz Lona is a very, very strong driver. And that, that Kim Erickson is, again, a very, very strong driver. You've got two brilliant drivers going up against each other. But we've got to move for third position. Patrick Holter has gotten out to the inside, into the chase. He's got the move done on David Novoroski. Jack Sedgwick has really gone for the move as well. And he's got himself past. So Novoroski, in the space of one corner, Will, he's lost two positions. Yeah, well, we'll make it two and a half corners because of the chase but here we are Patrick Holtzman as he heads himself towards the chase Holtzman taking the left hand side that gives you the inside line as you put yourself onto the brakes they get really close together Holtzman able to outbreak and just bowl catch a little bit I think the issue more than anything else for Jack Sedgwick is Sedgwick was almost about to run over um, the driver Nowakowski as they head themselves down into the braking zone gonna have another look on board with Jack Cedric to see how close this was. And you see Cedric getting the toe from both angles, slams him to the brakes here, and yet more than anything else, he almost runs into the rear of Patrick Holtzman. Yeah, and that could have been very devastating up at the front of your field, but Holtzman has managed to get himself in that all-important podium position. With eight minutes remaining, that's looking very likely that he will hold on to that one. However, behind the battle for fourth position, it isn't over yet, because Jack Sedgwick, he might have gone the pass done, but Novakovsky wants to get back past by the look of it. He looked very competitive up into the cutting, and of course the cutting is not the way you want to make a move. However, his run over the mountain through McPhillamy Park and through Solon Park has been very scrappy sideways, and he's lost a lot of time. The gap is now half a second, and that's allowed Jack Sedgwick to start putting pressure onto Patrick Holtzman. Yeah, as we have a look from the rear of Jack Sedgwick right now, looking for a podium finish in this event. And any of these drivers would be very happy with that as they just head themselves now out of turn number 17, the run down towards the chase once again. As Jack Sedgwick grew on board from the rear, let's see whether or not Darren Nowakowski will try and make a run back at him. The gap is down to one-tenth of a second as they come down into the chase. And side by side they will go for the moment. And they've got to almost try and split Holtzman here. Holtzman then going to be under pressure as they come through. And actually, the Triton Racing Car will have a good run on the exit of this corner, giving him the inside line into Murray's. This could move Nowakowski back up into the fourth position. No. Cedric can make it work around the outside, but let's say side by side as they now come down towards Hell Corner. And Nowakowski refusing to give up that position as now they come down into Hell Corner and Cedric is going to keep it. Jack Sedgwick had the elbow extensions out there. I've never seen it. it was almost like he was trying to push Nowakowski off of the circuit. And I think it wasn't intentional coming out of the chase, but it was quite clear that was what happened. And for Novakovsky, did a very good job of keeping hold of that number 13 machine and then still being able to put the pressure on into Murray's corner and through Hell Corner. But it just wasn't enough. Sedgwick got the better drive off of the first corner and he just driven away down the corner of straight. Novakovsky's got to get himself together and try again come the end of this lap. Yeah, so looking through, uh, looking through then your field, any other close battles we have. 
Still got the battle going on with Kim Erickson, Bobby Zelensky, David Williams, and um, that is staying as it is. I say that, Kim Erickson's now at the front of a train. No, he's not. He's still got Moritz Lerner just ahead of him. So, scrap what I just said. So, we've got two real battles going on. Battle for third and battle for sixth place on track as the retiree list continues to grow. We now have only 16 drivers running with five minutes of this event to go, Jack. Yeah, and that's a very large attrition rate. Bear in mind that we started off with 25. We've lost nine drivers so far, eight drivers in in a 25-minute period. And that really does show, I mean, we're sprint racing, so it's not like we need to know the car's going to be there in 12 hours' time, as such with the drivers taking part in the 12 hours of Bathurst at the same time. But for these drivers, it's still very, very important. Going back to this battle for third position, Jack Sedgwick getting an absolutely brilliant run out of the dipper and through Forest Elbow. Holtzman getting an awful run down the Coral straight. Sedgwick, no a challenge for him getting past. Novakoski going to the outside through the chase. Holtzman having to really defend on the inside, but he's got nothing. I think there's something wrong with Holtzman's car because he was really slow down the Conrad straight. I actually think it is, Jack. It's a double toe. When you get two people going side by side, it just seems to be that your person who was originally out front just has nothing at all. We saw it earlier on. We've seen this again with the driver being at the front of the train, losing both the positions. Yeah, and I think that's very, very important. It's going to be interesting to see if Jack Sedgwick can hold on to this one at the end of this lap because David Novikovsky, he's very close behind, but Patrick Holtzman has really dropped back. He's suffered a lot. He's got eight tenths between himself and Novikovsky. Novikovsky looking like he might put a challenge on as they head themselves through Quarry Bend, but it's not going to happen onto the exit. Sedgwick running a much wider line on the exit, actually, there, Will. That could be interesting because the curb, if he's not careful, will unsettle the car. Wasn't quite close through that section, of course. He wasn't. Um, just having a look back as well towards other battles going on. We have got one other battle that we haven't talked about. And this is David Accor in the Orion race team car versus Thomas Tatala in the number 23 machine. And David Accor is closing up quickly to the rear of Thomas Tatala in the number 23 machine. And the gap has come down from over two seconds now, Jack, down to about six tenths. Yeah, last time around, it just looks as though David Accor was about half a second quicker than Tartala ahead. And for Tartala, he could be struggling in the closing stages. These drivers will have two laps remaining after the one they are currently on. So it's not all over. They've still got a good 12, 14, 15 kilometers to complete of this event as these two drivers will head themselves into the S's. It looks as though Tartala has managed to gain some time back there, Will, because the gap is now more than a second again. It is. So a couple of scrappy laps there from Tetzler. He's been able to keep himself under control. We're on to the back stretch once again, but you are right here. Holtzman has dropped back 1.5 seconds, Jack. So I'm wondering, maybe he slightly underfueled the car. It's such a long lap here at Bathurst that if you don't put in the right amount and you don't save enough, then you are basically going to end up in a situation where you run out before the start finish line, especially as you've got to go uphill through the chase a little bit as well. Holtzman has got damage to his race car, but it's nothing more than what we've seen by other drivers. Yeah, that's really confused me, and fuel shouldn't be an issue here at Bathurst because these Porsches can go for about an hour. It's, if, if that happened, it would be a case of You've just fueled that wrong. You've got the wrong fuel number. And I think that's really important to understand. I think that wrong fuel number could be disastrous. Novikovsky, though, going for the for the position. Third position, Sedgwick going to stick on the inside as they head themselves through turn two. No grip on the outside for Novikovsky. And Sedgwick getting a good run as they head themselves up into the cutting. Yeah, I think Max Benecker could have told him there's no grip on the outside of the turn number two here early on when he had his incident. But Novikovsky remains in fourth place as it is for the time being. Keeping an eye out, this is not going to be the last lap of the motor race. There will be one more lap to go because Jared Phil Sell is about halfway through the lap. We've got one minute and 20 seconds to go in this event. Jared Phil Sell has had an almost flawless race. I say that, he just glanced the wall a little bit as he headed himself through Skyline. 
as long as he didn't implant himself in the wall, that's what matters. And for Jared Philsell, he's just shown why he's going to be one of the drivers to watch out for this year. I think he's extremely strong, really shown his, his name in this series. Of course, Lyle, he came away with an absolutely brilliant position. And as long as he can survive the next seven or eight kilometers of this Bathurst racetrack, he will be able to take away his first win in this Saturday Strength of Field race. And that will be a brilliant achievement. Leading lights to flag, led every lap, got the pole position. He really has got the grand slam. The only thing he doesn't have is the fastest lap. Yeah, but what a pole position it was there by Jared Phil Sell. He was, get this, uh, almost a third of a second faster than anyone else in this event. Uh, yeah, it was. I think it was three and a half tenths between himself and the driver who started second on the grid, which was Novakovsky. Ski did an 06.354. Aaron Fussell did an 06.013. Uh, so it was an absolutely brilliant lap. It was a lap of the gods, and I think probably more of luck as well for Phil Sell as he heads himself onto the final lap. All of these drivers are now seeing the white flag, and they've just got one more circumnavigation remaining. Yep, so this is the last lap then of this event, and let's just show you your top three on the left-hand side of your screen. Jared Philsell leaves by 2.9 seconds over Camel Frantak. He's eat that gap out more over the last couple of laps, but Holtzman and Lona, they're going side by side. So there are issues there. More issues for Patrick Holtzman. He's lost fifth place to Marx Lona as they head themselves up the hill, and I would not be surprised to see Kim Eriksson, Bobby Zelensky, David Williams all try and inflict damage in the next couple of corners as well. On board with Kim Eriksson as they work themselves up up the mountain and well for drivers like Kim Erickson getting a P6 here today is going to be huge for them. Yeah, that's a massive points move for Erickson. He's obviously got to get past Patrick Holtzman first. Holtzman, you can tell he's slow because Moritz Lona is driving off and Erickson really did try and get past through the cutting, but it's not a place you really want to be trying to make a move as they head themselves up into the S's for the final time. They've got to get this right for Erickson, for Bobby Zelensky, for David Williams. Is it a case of Patrick Holtzman is going to run out of fuel on the final few corners of this event and then could get themselves some free positions? Yeah, let's stay on board then with Kim Erickson as they now come to the major acceleration zone. The exit of Forest Elbow for the final time. Jared Philsell leads this race and will cross the line in about 35, 40 seconds. Kim Erickson to the outside of Patrick Holtzman. Gets himself up a position. Bobby Zelensky, oh my word, what an incident! Oh my word, what an incident. Bobby Zelensky and Patrick Holtzman down at the chase. We'll show you a replay of that one in a second because Jared Philsell is your winner here in the sixth round of the Porsche Pro Series. But we need to have another look at that one again for Patrick Holtzman and one of the Karana Simsport drivers, I believe, Bobby Zelensky. Let's have a look then as they come down. Bobby Zelensky did finish this race, but let's have a look. We're on board of Bobby Zelensky right now. And just look at the two. That's the fastest point on the racetrack by a mile. Zelensky was able to get through that one. My word, what a crash we just saw. And that was caused by Holtzman coming back across onto the racing line. Zelensky had a closing speed, and it was a good 10, 15 kilometers an hour faster. Holtzman was just unsighted. Slight contact they made to push them both into the left-hand side, Arnko and the, and the wall. Zelensky was able to carry on with damage, jumping himself over the gravel on the grass. But for Patrick Holtzman, he ended this very, very disastrous race for him on his roof. Wow. What a crazy end. Another crazy end um, to this, the Porsche Pro Series. Let's give you a look through your final race results. In fact, what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick one-minute break. When we come back, final race results after that.
We are just a few days away from the inaugural round of the 2019 E NASCAR Peak Antifreeze I Racing Series from Daytona. The high 31 degrees of Banks, 100 laps. And we've also had ourselves the first ever draft in series history as well. Catch the inaugural round of the 10th season of the championship live on Racebot TV and on the iRacing Esports Network. Let's get you back then to your final race results here from Mount Panorama. Jared Phil Sells, your winner by 3.1 seconds over Kemal Frantak. Jack Sedgwick in third place. Darren Arakoski in fourth, Moritz Luna in fifth, Kim Erickson in sixth, David Williams in seventh, Bobby Zelensky somehow managed to come home in eighth place after that last lap crash, Alexander Thebe in ninth place, and Max Benecke all the way down in P number 10 in this event. On to page number two. Thomas Tatler had himself a good start to this event, got past, had a couple of incidents. I Chen Guven involved in some of the incidents early on as well, having to get past cars as crashes were unfolding ahead of him. Sebastian Dunkel, 13th place, David Accor in 14th. Glenn Key in the 15th position, the last of your drivers on the lead lap. Patrick Holtzman finishes one lap down. Dennis Grubowski finishes seven laps down after his incident with Mika Happenden. Alejandro Sanchez, nine laps down, as is Marin S. Kolak. He was involved in an incident with Igor D. Ogonotikov. I had it right earlier on. I will do it before the end of this broadcast. Jake Hewlett, 22nd place. Oli Bakula, 23rd. Enzo Benito, 24th. Ricardo Castroleda rounds out your top 25. And while Jack, not a good day for Max Beneke. No, he started this event in P number seven, was looking good, looking strong, like just tagging onto the back of the lead group in P number six, and then it all started going downhill. I think he did lose a position to Alexander Thebe in the closing stages of this event, because with the incident with Patrick Holtzman and Bobby Zelensky, he should have finished P number nine, but he didn't. He finished P number 10. So Max William Beneke still got a top 10 finish here today, but it definitely wasn't the top five or even the podium that I'm sure he would have loved. Yeah, he did get himself um, up into second place in the championship, however, as a consequence of that. Just having a look in terms of him and his course's 10,000 plus I rating. What happened to him as a consequence of that one? Well, um, my eyes are not working very well today, quite clearly, because I can't see where he's shown on this one. He raced a race earlier, got himself some eye rating. He's going to lose some um, here in this one. This might put him very close to dipping below 10,000 once again. We have still got a couple of races, though, to come in this series, and we've got three very difficult races, many would argue. Suzuka next week, the Canadian Tires Motorsports Park and Sebring. Jack, which of these is going to pose, in your opinion, the hardest challenge for these drivers? I think my honest personal opinion, after Mount Panorama, it would probably be Mossport, the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. It's a very tricky circuit, much like Mount Panorama. Lots of up and down elevation changes, off corner cam or off camber corners, and I think for these drivers, getting these two circuits right is going to be what makes or breaks your championship. Yeah, indeed so. And just waiting to see confirmation of any changes to the um, point, I believe, because of the 12 hours of Bathurst. It might not be possible for us to get anything before we go off air. I'm going to try it one more time. I got it right earlier on in my own head. Ogoro Denikonov. Oh, no, no, not quite. Ogoro you know what, Jack? You have a go, and then I'll have a go. Oh, let's see if I can remember. It's, I see it as Egor D. Ogordinovkov. No, that's that, wrong. Yeah, Ogordinikov. That's one. Yeah. That's I one. We got it right. right. We got it right in the end, yes. I didn't earlier. I messed up. Badly. Well, that is almost all we've got time for here. Don't forget the 12 hours of Bathurst. It is live. It is exclusive on Racebot TV and on the iRacing Esports Network. And, of course, the first round of the 2019 NASCAR Peak Antifree Series. The eNASCAR Peak Antifree Series will be live, as ever, here on Racebot TV. In the meanwhile, 
from Jack Styles and myself, Will Vincent. Want to give a shout out as ever to be able to get it done. It's one battle out, trackcam22.com. Andres Warner and Juan Design, Simon Grossman, AppGenering.com, and Nick Thyssen for Racebot TV, live timing and scoring. In the meanwhile, goodbye for now from Bathurst, but don't forget, the 12 hours of Bathurst is still going on.